And hello there. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Full Quota podcast. This is your number one um, podcast platform on South African cricket. We do domestic cricket that you know us. Um, we also talk all things about the Proteas. Um, and so we've got a really, really nice show lined up for you today. Remember, please do follow us on Twitter at Full Quota Pod um, and also follow myself and Tim um on twitter i'm paul Moreki and tim is tim32 underscore cricket uh please do let us know what you think um yeah we are on spotify we're on apple and we're also on youtube uh as at one world sports radio as well so um interesting things happening in the world of cricket this week everyone's talking spirit of cricket and tim and i on the opposite side of the debate we'll talk about that on monday because there's also sa20 news that we need to dissect and we'll talk about that there's going to be trades players are going to be retained um so we're going to be giving you all that information so you need to wait for that on monday but as you know it is kind of our preseason. Normally, in our preseason, we have discussions with players um, and just to get to know them better and cricketers to get to know them better. So, we're going to do that now. But before we do anything, Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, it's good to be back. We, we had a, a bit of a, a break, but uh, it's good to be back uh, after our. Oh, it's been, it's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple yeah. of weeks since we, since we last, last had a chat. Yes, yeah. So. Uh, We've got um, an interview lined up for you today. Um, he is a Protea uh, international bowler, which is amazing. Um, he, he's one of my favorite uh, players in South African cricket because he's got the passion. He, you know, every time he goes out, he always wears his heart on his sleeve. I remember, um, I think for SA20, he played for the Joburg Super Kings, and I, I think he got four for 36 at Centurion. And it was just. In that day, the ball was flying everywhere, but he seemed to keep us cool quite a lot um, on that day, even though the, the Super Kings lost, sadly for me. But anyway, um, he also has a very interesting record. I'm going to ask him about that, if he knows that. So, yeah, so we've got Lazard Williams um, here with us. So let's bring him on. Um, hi, Lazard. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Hi, everyone listening. Um, I'm fine. No stress. But I would on a break now currently in the western cape yeah, cool. so just re resting up yes uh back home you've been traveling the world recently um so uh yeah Sri Lanka. and how was that tour there yeah just came back about two week 10 days 11 days ago from sri lanka um, it's been a very humbling um tour with a lot of learnings um, obviously, the conditions is way different to South Africa, um, but an, it, it's been a, a good tour um, in the states of my career where I'm at. Um, I see it very useful with the information gathered there, um, obviously, to to use this off-season now um, and implement some new skill skills to my set, and hopefully I can be a better cricketer when the season starts. Okay, um, yeah, I've, I've got an interesting thing. So you hold a record, right? There's there's not necessarily a handful, but there have been bowlers who, on their international debut, ODI debut, have taken a wicket with their first ball. But there have been two other South Africans to do it outside of you. Do you know who those two South Africans are? Um, I think Zondeki is one. Yes, um, that is true. Uh, I don't know the other one. I'll forgive you for not knowing the other one because I think a lot of people won't know. Um, but the other name is Martin van Yarsveld. Um, he did in the same oh. season as Martin as Monde Zondeki. Uh, his was against Bangladesh and Zondeki's was against Sri Lanka. So um, okay. it's it's quite a cool thing. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I wouldn't have known that one either. I knew Zondeki, but I certainly didn't know if it was van Yarsveld. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, okay. you don't expect you don't expect Martin to to bowl in games. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, so it was a bit of a it was a bit of an interesting thing. But um, Lazard, we always start these interviews just trying to get to know you. So, um, how did you get into the game of cricket? 
um, you know, how, what, what, playing other sports, um, or, or, like what happens, how do you, you know, end up having that red ball in your hand for the rest of your life? Um, I guess growing up, um, you tested out almost every sport. Um, it happens in the streets, to be honest. You play soccer, rugby, volleyball, cricket in the streets. Um, and you just enjoy being active. Um, it was only up till I was 18 years old where I fully decided I'm going to pursue cricket. So um, up till 18, it was still very close between cricket and rugby, um, which I consulted with a few people and ended up choosing cricket. But from my young age, playing in the streets, um, like most of the, the kids. So, yeah, fell in love with, I would say with sport, I won't necessarily say it's just cricket, but mm. in, with sport, with sport in general. Yeah. Unlike the kids today on their tablets and stuff, we actually played, played in the streets, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've had a fair few test matches, um, really good innings um, in the streets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> And then I'll remember them. But uh, the today's generation don't know that. Don't know that Standard Bank advert um, yeah. <laughs> where everyone's trying to emulate their stars. Yeah. When we, when we have a chat with, with players, there's always individuals who have a influence on their careers early on who give them that extra push early on b before they really make it. Um, and, and it ranges uh, in terms of who that individual is. Who was that one person that, that gave you that, 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 that base within the love of, of the game to then make it later on in life? Who was, who was your inspiration, shall we say? Um, it's, it's difficult to to put my finger on one specific person if if I have to to speak about the inspiration it will most probably be my mom um, who is not here with us anymore mm. um, she passed away unfortunately in 2019 um, but it's just the way how, su how supportive she was towards me and my sport um, in particular um, um, I most probably saw it as a way to to better our lives um, if I can make it big in sport. So I would say my mom was probably my biggest inspiration behind me pursuing becoming a professional sportsman. Um, to be honest, my first love was rugby. Um, and like I say, I consulted with a few people. Mm. So that's how I ended up choosing cricket but at the end it was a good decision so yeah look it it it, it was a sensational decision and uh, i'm sure when you managed to get your debut for the protest um you know she was very proud where she is and um yeah our, our mother's always very strong so that's that's a beautiful yeah. story thanks for sharing with us um so obviously you you were in the Western Cape, playing cricket that side. Um, how was your transition into the professional side of the game? Obviously, NCA under 19s, but um, I think recently there's been talk around how hard it is to get into a professional team and be a professional cricketer. Can you take us through those years of going from NCA under 19 into the setup? Did you find it very easy? Did you find it very hard to make that step up into? the professional ranks? Um, sitting where I am today, I would, I would say it's it's quite hard. Um, acting as a as an adult where you're actually still much of a kid, like you wet behind your ears. Um, in the environment I started off, it was very experienced with a lot of pro tiers, I speak. Speaking about your Justin Kemp's, your um, mm. Rory Clainfield's, Vernon, Sal Langerfield, those guys. So it was an environment that was very much driven by the players, which was good. So everyone um, 
keeps everyone accountable. So I learned a lot um, from them. But um, if I if I look back, it's in my first two years, even three years up till mm. 21, probably. Um, I was probably never ready in terms of mentally knowing how to to be prepared to to succeed um, as a professional cricketer. Um, I can only be grateful for them guiding me um, in those in those first few years of my career, because um, you have the title as a professional cricketer, but you you don't really know what it takes to to succeed and they always say it's easy getting the contract but the hard part is actually keeping the contract so um yeah i'm i'm grateful for for those guys that i started off um especially guiding me through the through those that process um as a youngster and now me in a bit more of a senior role up in at northern i'm trying my utmost best to help the younger guys coming through as well, just to to make them understand what it takes to to stay here and su- and succeed. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I was I was actually gonna gonna ask uh, along those lines of what Paul just asked, be a bit more slightly more specific, uh, be a bit more specific. Um, there's always been fast bowlers in South Africa. There's always been somebody where the South Africans can can look to. You know, that all all my life there's been there's been fast bowlers around. What's it like being in that sort of environment where you are around guys who became legends of the game or were, were becoming legends of the game? You know, Dale Staines, Verlanders, um What's it like being in a, in a country where, from the outside, it looks quite difficult to get in? Because, as I say, there always are fast bowlers available. Um, it's how can I put it? With the ex players, is unbelievable. Um, rubbing shoulders now and again with Fern. Um, mm. Seeing ta- seeing Taylor a few times at Centurion, um, just speaking about um, the game, um, I learned quite a lot from a guy like Rory Clainfield, um, which is very simple in his way how he goes about things. And those guys are legends of of our cricket here in South Africa. Currently, um, in the South African environment or the team, um, it's obviously challenging to get in like you say but mm-hmm. um, I see the system and are we operating at the moment um, it allow and challenge you to to be better like you can't stagnate otherwise the system is going to kick you out um, you're obviously trying to better your game the whole time and and just be prepared when your opportunity comes um, you also understand the the dynamics of the team and the packing order and so and so forth. Um, so you need to be a bit honest with yourself as well. Um, but it does provide your opportunity and amazing um, work ethic to get better because you know to to get into the current Proteas bowling lineup, um, it's it's not going to be easy. So it challenges you to go work mm. on your game physic physically, mentally work on your skill constantly. Um, so at the end of the day, if if I walk away from cricket one day, um, I just want to be happy with myself and say you gave your your best and you maybe couldn't have gave more because um, the, the, the pool of fast bowlers in South Africa at the moment is, is unbelievably good. And I'm so like whoever plays mm. won't, won't let the team down. So um, I reckon we we in a very good space um, from a pool of fast bowling. But like you say, there's always been fast bowlers floating around in South Africa. 
Yeah. Um, the, the, the age old South African adage of you can find a fast bowler anywhere. Um, but <laughs> I love what, I love what you said there about, you know, playing the game the right way, playing with passion. Um, and you always play it with your heart on your sleeve. It, it like, and that's the one thing I think a lot of fans, including myself, love about you is that we know that even like in, 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 in there are lots of dull moments or slow moments in the game. And you respect every format. Whenever I've watched you play Titans, Western Province, uh, with the Cobras back then, um, even at the pro tier level, you always just give a hundred percent, and 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 we really do appreciate that. Um, my next question is: obviously, in twenty twenty one, you get called up into the setup. Uh, and that was a recognition of your years in, in the ga- domestic game, being the consistent bowler that you are, the top bowler at that at the domestic level. When you got the phone call, what did you, what like, what was your reaction? What did you think? Because it must have been amazing. Yeah, it's a surreal feeling, to be honest. Um, uh, actually, like, you never actually know how close you are. Like mm. you always think, you always think I'm a bit further away, especially your guys mentioning the bowling attack that South Africa has. Um, at, with the duration of the phone call, it didn't hit me yet, but as soon as I'm, I was off the phone call, and I called my, my now wife, she was still my fiance at that time. Um, it actually kicked in. Um, and we started to cry because it was obviously a moment I would I wanted to say with my mom, because at the at the end it was after all I was doing it for her, and now she wasn't gonna she wasn't there for, to share my happiness with me. Mm-hmm. Um, but unbelievable feeling. Um, I believe it should be every cricketer's dream in this country to. To play for Proteas, it's uh, mm. and it's also something no one can take away from you. Um, even if you don't perform, even if you don't perform playing for Proteas, but you you definitely needed to do something right con- consistently to to get picked for for South Africa. Yeah. yeah, and and you've been picked consistently. You know, you even um, you're picked as a reserve for the for the last World Cup, but you've been in and around the setup you played that those two test matches in bangladesh uh, against bangladesh which i thought were just as test matches go they weren't they weren't the traditional south african test matches on the high felt but they were very um entertaining and what i what i think we got to see was um a different side to you a side that not many people saw of you because they saw you as a limited overs bowler but from a longer format you were really good and you've always been good and 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 i like that you got th- that opportunity to 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 express that side is there a format that you like or because you're an all format player but is there one where you're like yeah this one if it all ended up and the uh, money was right i could live here um thank you for the compliments um to be honest my favorite format is it's four day cricket which is test cricket and international format mm. um circuit um it it tests everything of in you of you it tests your skill it tests your mentality it tests your fitness um it's just that's why i call the the purest format of the game um so if i can add another four to five test matches to my career um I would walk away satisfied um, and I would believe that I had a good career and that's my that's my biggest motivation now at the mm-hmm. moment um, trying to add more more test matches to my telly I know it's gonna be tough with like I say with the bowling lineups that that's there um, but I believe um, I'm driven enough and uh, I work hard enough to to achieve it um, obviously, you need some luck in your career as well, mm. um, and, and hopefully, hopefully the dice fall in my favor, um, <laughs> and I can, I can add a few more tests. Yeah, um, but yeah. it's a, it's 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 the best format, um, Test cricket. 
Yeah. What even I, even I, though I, t- I just played two tests, um, mm. but it was still unbelievable. It, it, it must be. But what I can tell you is we had Sarl here as one of our first interviews. And it was while he was um, as a as an understudy to Dean and, and, and Aiden. And um, he also said, like, he doesn't know, but he's hoping to get a chance. And after he came on, he then a couple of months later got his debut. Um, Senran Mutasami, we spoke to him a couple of months ago. Um, and he then, at the time, didn't know where he stood um from a national setup and recently he he got he got he got an opportunity to also play so as you say the luck and with uh, we think people who come on our podcast um have a little bit of extra luck um and, and <laughs> can, can get a few more test matches um but as you say it is it is quite hard and it's how do you keep your mental state um being in and around because you're in the setup right Obviously, it's a step up from Northerns, and it's it's amazing, and it's it's nice to be around there. But to to always to how do you keep it up, knowing that you're not sure whether you're going to play or not, but you still need to take the wickets, give them that effort that you always give, and and always be up for that when that opportunity comes and that knock comes and says, "Hey, it's your turn." Um. First of all, it's obviously you you understand how many people you're representing mm. um, and, uh, and how many cricketers in South Africa um, would dive to have the opportunity that you have. Um, mm. It can get tough. It can get tough sometime. Um, but it's just about sitting back, humbling yourself and, and ask yourself why you're doing it and for who you're doing it. Um, I reckon it's difficult to find information sorry motivation mm. if you're just doing it for your for yourself so um it it's obviously for something way bigger than myself so um that that's what what's keeping me motivated yeah. that's beautiful. i think i think having, having that drive is important you know, wherever it come, comes from having that drive is, is you see a lot of guys when they they reach a certain age they that drive disappears and they just give up they just go you know what well, I've, I've done it but having that drive is, is, yeah. is which you which you clearly have is is a huge yeah. huge huge thing um i, I want to touch on something that has been a bit of a, a challenge uh, i'm a very much a proponent of the county setup i i think the more of our guys go over there um and play the county circuit it is it is the better i think their games improve, and for 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 a range of reasons. Uh, I know your your trip over at North Hans was short lived. It wasn't that long, but could you just give us an idea of what it was like to play on those pitches and those conditions? Um, just give us a, 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 an idea of what it was like last season playing county cricket. Well, um, I hundred percent agree with you regarding. Um, it's it's very good to go over there um again it was very humbling i i went with a bit of a different expectation um because if we if we hear england we we get used to the hype about it's gonna seem around um and when i i went over i played one game at somerset one game at <laughs> Southampton. Southampton, Southampton which yeah. is a nice, it's a nice wicket, and one game at, at um, Northern's Field, um, mm. which was so different. The conditions were, um, it it was challenging, but I've I've really learned a lot. Uh, I reckon from going to England next last year um, mm. up till coming coming back from South Africa, um, from Sri Lanka now. Sorry. Uh, I'll probably say uh, these few six to eight months was probably the most I've learned throughout my my career because it's the first time I actually went to different conditions mm. um, with, with my skill set. And you go and you believe like your skill set is good enough because you're obviously um, performing in South Africa with, with different conditions. Um, 
but as I went overseas now, um, you actually learn so much and you actually realize there's so much you need to still work on um, in your game. Um, but county cricket is, is very good. Um, mm. I would love to go back if I if I have the opportunity again. Um, and I'm actually looking at, at opportunities to go again. Um, okay. Obviously, just to, to go see again um, if the the stuff you implemented in your game, if you're going back, if it's actually, are you actually better equipped than you were the last time? I, 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 Paul, I'm just going to add mm-hmm. something. I think, I think, I think that's, that's fantastic. Um, the example I will give you is Tuan Olafia. Tuan Olafia yeah. went over there, struggled initially, went back a second time and was much better. Yes. He was he was yeah. much better. He learnt he learned the links to bowl over there. Uh and, and yeah. he was it was much better. So I, I felt for you. I really felt for you. I watched those games on on the live stream and I really felt for you. Especially that Somerset pitch. You know, it that's, was flat. It we was call flat as a cider bad. Because it, it was <laughs> I, I, I was I was I was I, I felt for you and I, I really did. It was just unfortunate. Yeah. It was it was tough. I, I won't lie. It was tough. Um, uh, I've maybe put a bit too much pressure on myself as well to perform because you're obviously going over as the as the overseas pro, and you want to do well. Um, but like I said, that that three games probably I believe it it put me in good stead going forward. Mm. Um, even though you you didn't perform. It's just ironically how, how this game works. In your tough times, you actually learn um, the most uh, about your skill or yourself. Um, and I believe those three games, um, it's going to end up making me a much better player than, than what I am today. Yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah. Yes, that is true. And I think, I think maybe even this past Sri Lanka tour that you were on, I think, was a learning um, experience for a lot of the guys who were there. I don't know if you if it was your first time back in Sri Lanka or um, or, your, or your second, but um, how was it playing on those pitches? We we, we didn't have... We, we caught some of the games, but we didn't have a lot of the footage. And yeah, yeah. The, 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 the wording coming out of Sri Lanka was they went as flat as normal, but it's still... Yeah going to be a challenge for our fast bowlers and we we did see that but what what learnings did you see out of there that you could apply um especially um on tracks as flat as 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 as, as those um yeah first Ken, candy wasn't too bad um mm-hmm. there was it wasn't slow but it wasn't quick as well there was just enough in to mm. to to rust the batsman a bit a bit um off the wicket. It wasn't too bad. Um the last game in Colombo that was that was flat. I promise that that was the flattest I, I played on <laughs> and the slowest. Mm. Um but it just it just requires you to to outlast the batsman with your with patience and, and be consistent. Mm. Um, on like they say, top of off with the odd bumper. Um, mm. In the in the subcontinent, you probably realize how how consistent you have to be on top of off. Because um, you feel you can get them out the LBW, but they they've been playing in those wickets for years, mm. and they know that's their big that's their biggest form of this muscle. So you you're not getting them out the LBW. That's hundred percent for sure. Um, it's obviously important you need a ball to to start to reverse as well. Um, so that that was a bit challenging as well to get the ball to reverse because um, you can obviously only use your sweat now and not mm. um, saliva anymore. Um, which Thank plays you, a role as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then again, it it was a it was a very good experience, uh, a humbling one. Um, and as I say, as I say, so far through through my humble 
experience is our walk away as a as a as a better cricketer. So yeah. Mm. I'm looking forward to to what I've learned there as a cricketer now. I have a month or so to go work on my game now when I join up with the Titans again. So it's a unbelievable opportunity to to implement um, mm. the stuff I learned there into my game now. Yeah. One of the interesting things about this tour, this SAA tour, was that it was headed by both the pro tier coaches. And how was it just being in the space with them? Because not a lot of A tours will have that. Um, and, and being able to talk to them. And, and, and obviously you say, as uh, we've been discussing, there's lots of fast bowlers in the, in, in, in the pipeline. But, you know, did they, you know, give an indication of what's needed for that next step up for us to get those next few test matches, one days and T20s for you to be able to play? Um, I think it's, it's very good having the Proteas coaches um, involved with the SAA team going forward, even if you have the assistant coaches, if the pro tier guys can't mm. be there. Um, I just reckon the line of communication is much clearer than, than you exactly know what's expected of you going forward. Um, and you can obviously have that, that open conversations um, with the coaches, like uh, where do I fit in the system, all that kind of conversations. Um, I just reckon from a communication point of view it's 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 perfect the way the mm. way it is. Like I'm 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 a I'm a fan of the way um the system is run now at the moment because mm. it's communication is it's it's much clearer and easier. Now that's that's really that's good. That's awesome to hear. To hear. And yeah. it's 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 confirmed by everyone else we've spoken to and and had. It's, it's it's like everybody seems to know where they are, what they need to do, um, in order for them to 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 make their mark and 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 to impress the coaches. Which, um, previously, we 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 heard we didn't hear similar things. So, um, it's really good to know. Um, there's a World Cup coming up um at the end of the year, um. That would be something also in the subcontinent uh, for you. Um, we'll, everyone's working hard to that. Um, and we'd love to see you on the plane, Lazard. Um, obviously, he was going to be working with the Titans uh, now and, 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 and with the Proteas, but there was a skills camp that, that, that happened, was it last week or, or the week there? Um, yeah, how... How are you feeling uh, around around that, and also the upcoming uh, domestic season? Um, we actually got back yesterday. Um, the camp ended yesterday. Um, yeah, I feel I have an outside chance. Obviously, the conditions where we're going to, mm. um, you have to be realistic as well. But it doesn't stop you from working hard. Um, um, and in case you get the call up that that you're going, so you're obviously trying to control what you can control. Mm. Um, but whoever goes, if I'm in it or not, I'm, I'm wish I'm wishing the team, and I, I believe um, it's the best 15 guys that can go mm. there and win us the World Cup. Um, Coach Coach Rob Walter, it's he's very hardworking. Um, Definitely the hardest off work um, in terms of of a whole structure of training and stuff. Mm. So I believe I believe we're in good hands and um, we're in a good space um, with the upcoming games versus Australia going into the World Cup. Um, domestically, I'm 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 very excited for the last. Two seasons. I haven't played a lot at the Titans. Mm. Obviously, being away, away with the Pro Tiers, um, I have a feeling I, I might, for the start of the season now, I might be with the team if I if I don't make the World Cup squad, um, and it it will be good for me just to to play cricket. Um, last season was tough. I've only played about, if I'm not mistaken, I played six games. Mm. For the whole season, which is not 
ideal. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm just hungry to to play. Um, the Titans has been good for me, and I obviously want to con- contribute towards the success of of the union. It's a it's a union very rich of of each of history and well known for winning trophies. Um, so yeah, I just want to challenge myself to contribute towards the the union. Awesome. Two, too many people. Uh, one half of us is from Joburg and Paul and I from Cape Town. <laughs> too, too, too many of us from Cape Town are, are going up north this season. Too many. <laughs> At least to stop. <laughs> we will need to talk yeah. about that latest addition to the Titans and that women's team because I was like, no. I said they're going, uh-uh. like, well, they can't compete. <laughs> yeah. thing, like, we know the Titans are a winning franchise. Um, yeah. yeah look, one question about about how that centurion wicket has it gotten slower over the years? I won't say it's slower. It's it, it's it's a very good wicket to bet on, mm. um, but it's a very rewarding wicket if you bowl yeah. well. Um, a lot of guys don't like bowling there, but I actually love it. It's. Um, it requires you to be so disciplined and it's very rewarding. Mm. That's why I like it. If you bowl well on it, you'll get the results. If you bowl badly, um, mm. you're gonna, you're, they're going to they're gonna deal with you. Um, and I feel that's, that's where you can get away on, on other wickets um, mm. in the country um, with the outfields and the altitude and so on and so on where at Supersport Park, if you're not on top of your game, um, st- statistically, you will see it. <laughs> <laughs> we've, it, did, it we, did. we've seen a fair few games at Centurion where the yeah. bowlers were not at it and the batsmen just feasted. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Tim, I've got one more to go. Um, but, yeah, so for me... I'll, um... uh, Jeff, go ahead and Paul, okay. go, go ahead. So for me, Lazard, I think um, it's just um, how you prepare for new season. How do you prepare for um, the se- uh, well, 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 the season essentially? Well, this now I see one coming up domestically and everything else. Do you have any specific targets like a wickets tally that you always want to try and hit to say that once I've gotten there, it's a good season? Um, and 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 also maybe a touch on about how experience with SA20 was um, and, and how you experienced that? Um, I don't have targets going into a season. My, my main goal is just to contribute towards the team um, mm-hmm. and help, help where I can. Um, I, you don't have control over what's going to happen on the field, but you have control over how you're going into games, your preparation. Um, and especially the phase where we're in now, like I have control over how I look after my body now, how I work on my game um, to make sure I'm well e- equipped going into the season. So that's my goal now. Um, going to the SA20, um, it's a it's an unbelievable tournament. First of all, um, mm. it's very good for South for South African cricket. Um, I obviously didn't get a lot of opportunities, but I felt like the opportunities I got, I, I made it count. Um, it's it's definitely a tournament that that's gonna um, better our system, and obviously giving more exposure to to younger guys. Um, so I hope in four or five years we can reach the. Or the goal is to be the second biggest T20 um, league mm-hmm. in the world. Um, I definitely think we do have the potential um, to achieve that. Um, and all of the best to all the administrators involved with the tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first, the first edition was it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Yeah. To play, to it, play it in, in in front of of big crowds. It's, it's it's a dream for a lot of cricketers. Mm. That semi-final at Centurion, even though the Super Kings lost, was probably the, the fullest I've seen 
Centurion yeah. in years, and it was rocking. Uh, and you guys gave one, us a show. I won't lie. <laughs> well, one thing about people in in Pretoria is like they support their their local teams very well. Mm. If you look at the Bulls, if you look at mm. Sundowns, Super Sport United, like they they have a big fan base. The same with yes. Titans, like I'll. I reckon all domestic games, um, the games that I've played at Super Sport yes. Park, um, it's it's they probably have the the best crowd. Besides mm. Paul, Paul, Paul obviously have a have a nice crowd because um, the stadium is a bit smaller and it mm. always looks full. Um, but Super Sport Park is probably up there with the with the best support. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's 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 up there. Um, yeah, especially domestically, I think the 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 the, the fans yeah. in Pretoria do 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 make it through. Whereas the Definitely. the ones down south where I live just don't want to go. <laughs> Only go for the big games. Um, yeah, <laughs> just see myself much, there walking around. Too much, too much to do in yeah in Cape Town. People mm. will rather go chill on a wine farm than watching cricket. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's what we need to change. We've got too many options. We've got we've got too many options. Too many options. Yeah, too many options. Uh, Last one from me on the side. Um, I read uh, before this chat um, that education was quite important to you. Now, further doing doing studies and 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 you you got a degree a few years ago. Um, How important is that to you? Once you do decide to hang up your boots, is, 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 are you still looking to, to to do that, go back into your studies and study something? Um, I'm looking to do my honest, yes. Um, it might have to be at the back end of my career. I feel at the stage of my career where I am now, mm. I'm obviously try, trying to push to be a regular in the pro tier setup. Um, I feel it's going to be difficult to, mm. to persuade my, my, my honest because it's obviously going to require a lot of research work and so on. So it's definitely something I want to do. Um, and I'm, I'm very passionate still about achieving it. Um, but just currently now, my full focus is is on on becoming a more regular feature in the pro TSD. Now. That's, that's good it, to hear. That's good to hear. <laughs> I will I I will encourage every every mm. young cricketer. Um, I always speak about if it's possible for for South Africa to to follow the the American um, yes, model system. of 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 getting your recruitment through varsities. I, um, I just reckon it it saves uh, the human being. Um, mm. it's a, for society, understand you, you don't just want to be remembered as a cricketer, but as a better human being in society. No, that's uh, that, that's hundred percent true. I, and, I, and I do think your idea around um, following that American college model could work because we have so many kids coming out of high school wanting to play professional cricket but they don't have an outlet to play competitive cricket at a level just after that and it's a a university would be a university well we do have varsity cricket, right but we want it all round and we want uh, guys to play competitive cricket against the peers across the country and that yeah. type of a system where kids go to university they play and then after that they can go up into um, into the professional ranks, depending on obviously their skill level. But at the end of the day, we're covering their education part too. Um, but yeah, as as is, um, we will, you know, hopefully someone at CSA has listened to us, which would be amazing because I think that's another avenue. Um, but Lazard, I want to say thank you very much for joining us. I've really enjoyed this uh, conversation. Um, it's it's really nice to uh, to to have spoken with you, um, and you are an amazing man. And I think from a cricketing pers- perspective, you will get you will get more opportunities, and great things are are ahead of you. 
Um, you, you. Yeah, I think you have the right temperament and the right um, passion for the game and the right you're in the right headspace right now. And I think there's a little sweet spot that a sportsman gets when they just get their motivations right and then everything else will fall into place. And I think you're in that zone. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you in green and gold um, or in, in test match white, um, both. Uh, uh, but yeah, I really do wish you all the best. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you in churn. Um, yeah, I'll come down and say hi uh, when I'm that side supporting the other team from from Johannesburg, um, yeah. but <laughs> uh, but out, out of that, I was really happy when you got into the SA20, the Joburg Super Kings SA20 team, because I think you're one of the best closers in, in, in South African cricket, and, um, and that skill set is something that um, we, we really need. Um, so I think I'm really happy that you're in the setup, and I wish you all the best. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Lazard. Thanks very much. Yes. I, yes. I, cheers, yes. mate. Cheers, Lazard. Tim, another great interview with uh, a man I think we're going to see a lot more of. And um, I think we're even going to see more of him in that Australia series um, well, later in the year. I'm, I'm, what I was trying to get across was how difficult it is get into mm. that side for so many fast bowlers. I actually think at the moment he's got a genuine chance mm. of, of getting some of, of, of getting some regular mm. game time, not just the odd game. Um I think if we, if he remains fit domestically he's doing the numbers, he's doing the performances. He, as you say the semi final and I four for thirty six in semi final when he's hard to play the tournament. And the team when he's, he's called, bowling for, against when he's for called, 220. Yeah, when he's called upon, he's doing the business. Uh, I think he did better than he thinks with the white ball in Sri Lanka. Yes. I, I think his performances were, were, were decent. Struggled at the tests, but that that's that's understandable. It's a new country. Mm. Uh, I, I think he could he could get a, a, a nice chunk of games this season. I, I genuinely think so, if he remains fit. Yeah. No, and, and that's my thinking right now. I'm, if I'm at the Titans, I'm, I'm probably preparing for a season with Lazard not playing as many games as I would have hoped. Because I, I, like, I know, like, we always bemoan that people don't bowl Yorkers. This man does it, you know. And he's the type of guy who, if I want in the dressing room, because if I throw the ball to him, he gives me 100%. And like he said, you know, um, he, he knows that, you know, many people have died for the position for him to be in. And that's the type of mindset I want, right? From uh, outside of, like, obviously the skills level of all the other guys. But for me, he's doing that at the top of the domestic game, but he still has that motivation. And for me, I'd, I'd, I'd have him in my side. And, yeah, you know, there's many others in and around that in that in that setup. But I think... The skills he has are, are what we need. Um, and just a genuine guy, lovely guy. Really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. So, Tim, let's close this out. On Monday, we're going to be talking about SA20. Um, there's news I'm sure you've seen on social media around uh, new players coming in. Tom Benton, Moen Ali, um, David Milan. Oh. And I'm sitting there going, all of these picks are just like you guys, each of the teams and their personalities. But we're going to talk about that and more. So yeah. Monday, join yeah. us. We're going to be, we're going to even talk about trades because the other question I always had was like, okay, fine. People have different salaries and you technically have a salary cap. So for instance, if you want to trade Tristan Stubbs to, let's say, I don't know, um, send him to Cape Town. My Cape Town. You have to match <laughs> the salary, even though like Tristan got a lot of money. So things like that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to dissect that. So please do join us for that. But really, really awesome. Thank you very much, Lazard Williams, once again. Thank you very much, Tim, and to everybody. We'll see you on Monday. Good luck. Enjoy the spirit of cricket. We'll talk about the spirit of cricket on Monday. Enjoy the spirit of cricket because <laughs> I think there's a team that's in trouble and kind of like everyone's going to be like, karma, karma, this. But nah, you know, <laughs> it's what it is. Anyway, have a nice day, everyone. Enjoy. Goodbye. And le sale caca so. <laughs>